So the helicopter accommodates for dissimetry lift by teetering, or sometimes called flapping of the blades. So how much flapping is allowed by most helicopters? Well, the, in most helicopters only have about 10 to 11 degrees of flapping that's allowed. In other words, these blades are only going to flap about 10 to 11 degrees before you exceed the flapping limits, and bad things can happen, and we'll talk more about that specifically here in just a bit. But it's important that when you start flying a helicopter, you understand the things that increase uh, or uh, cause a, a uh, necessitate an increase in the amount of flapping that has to occur in the blades. So there's basically three things that you need to need to know about and understand that increase the flapping of a semi-rigid rotor system. The first of which is airspeed. So obviously, the faster you go, the greater the forward airspeed, the greater the dissymmetry of lift. And so, you know, if you're, there's much more uh, teetering or flapping that has to occur if you're going, you know, 100, 120 miles an hour than there is if you're going 20 miles an hour. The second thing is an increase in the angle of attack. And it can be an increase in the angle of attack of the individual blades uh, caused by raising the collective on the, the helicopter. Uh, when you raise the collective, it increases the angle of attack on both blades to an equal degree. Um, it's why it's called the collective because it collectively increases the angle of attack on all the blades whether there's two, three, four, five, or however many you have. And whenever you increase the angle of attack uh, by raising the collective that increases the amount of lift produced by the rotor system and anytime you increase the amount of lift everything else being equal, airspeed and all that the amount of teetering has to increase. So you think well wait a minute I'm increasing the, the amount of angle of attack on both the blades. Uh, shouldn't the amount of lift increase to an equal amount on the left side, the retreating side versus the advancing side? And it turns out that in time you increase the angle of attack and you increase the uh, amount of lift being produced, the amount of lift is always uh, increased the greatest at the three o'clock position. Therefore, a uh, lift increases most at the three o'clock position the amount of teetering has to increase and then if you increase the angle of attack of the rotor disc itself in other words you're flying through there if you imagine the spinning rotor is a solid disc when you come back on the stick and you angle the rotor disc back then the angle of attack of the rotor disc itself is increased the amount of lift is increased and the aircraft ascends or goes up if you come forward on the stick the amount of angle of attack to the rotor disc decreases, the amount of lift decreases, and the aircraft goes down. Well, the other thing that's happening at that time, when you increase the angle of attack coming back by coming back on the stick, it increases the amount of lift, and again, the increases in lift is always greatest at the three o'clock position, necessitating increased uh, amounts of teetering. And the third thing that can increase the amount of teetering, if everything else was equal, airspeed was equal, and would be if, you, if your rotor system was to slow down. If you had a decrease in rotor RPM, not much of an issue really with the, with the Robinson. You're flying, you have a governor, it pretty much controls the RPM right at 100. In the earlier days, most of the helicopters uh, did not have a governor, and so you were the governor. You had to roll the throttle to, to keep your RPMs right at 100%, and, uh, and if you got a little limp-wristed and lazy on the, on the throttle, didn't roll it up quite enough, you could get uh, a decrease in the amount of uh, rotor RPM.